Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is part two of <clears throat> book five in the Christian topography of Cosmos and Egyptian Monk. Um, translated from the Greek and edited with notes and introduction. Um, now, if you're just stumbling upon this video, I just a brief this is basically a guy who's traveled all over in his time period I believe around 600 AD who is refuting the um, heliocentric model that the Roman Catholic Church is trying to implement okay all right something like that here we go Part 2 of Book 5, starting with Elijah, which is on page 194. This is Elijah, the first of men who showed to men the path to heaven, the first of men who showed to angels and to men the one way, who through his, who though his lot was to be an inhabitant of earth, all at once penetrated into heaven who's who though who though a mortal yet vies even with the immortals who walked upon the earth and yet as a spirit treads with the angels the paths of heaven who with his mantle of sheepskin imparted to his disciple elisha a double share of his own gifts, a man who has lived for ages and is from old age exempt, who is reserved to be a leader against Antichrist, standing up against him and convicting him of deception and overweening pride, who from the error into which he has seduced them leads back all men to God at the consummation of the ages. This is he who is deemed worthy to be the forerunner of the second and glorious advent of the Lord Christ. Oh, the wondrous measure of his services, in which he competes with the angels. Glory to God, who graciously bestows these gifts upon men. Amen. Note. This is the great Elijah, who having been taken up as, up as into heaven, shows to men and angels how highly human nature has, shows to men and angels how highly human nature has been honored. And by means of him, God has again laid the foundations of a good hope that it is possible for men, if God will, to ascend into heaven. For it is a great and wondrous thing to see this man, bridle in hand, riding his fiery chariot as he sweeps the fields of air. Oh, what a wondrous kindness to his part who has bestowed the honor on his part who has bestowed the honor. Let those be ashamed of themselves who do not extol the mighty dispensation of God, who do not praise and admire how wisely and how dispassionately God, on the one hand, awards to men their punishment, and on the other, preserves the honor of, the, of man who was made in his image. Glory and praise to him forever and ever. Amen. The Prophet Hosea. This is Hosea, the first of the twelve prophets, who was privileged to speak concerning the Lord Christ in these terms. When they are afflicted, let them rise early to seek me, saying, Come, let us return unto the Lord our God, for he hath smitten us, and he will heal us. He that hath struck us with bind that struck us will bind us up. 
for two days will he heal us. On the third day we shall be raised again, and we shall live. With reference to this passage, the Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians, For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. For that he was buried, and that he was raised up on the third day according to the Scriptures, is not to be found anywhere else. The prophet still further says, What is applicable to Christ? My flesh is of them. And again he says, Ephraim compasseth about me, compa compasseth me about with falsehoods, and the house of Israel and Judah with ungodliness. Now God knoweth them, and there shall be called a holy place of God from the tribe. Through him who appeared out of it, namely the Lord Christ according to the flesh, the prophet calling Judah the holy people of God, yet again the same prophet says, From the power of the grave will I ransom them. Where is thy victory, O death? Where is thy sting, O grave? a passage which the Apostle has used concerning the resurrection. Note, this prophet also clearly predicted the resurrection on the third day, saying, On the third day we shall rise up. In like manner, also, he foretold the destruction of death and the vengeance upon the sting of the grave. How should we, how should we not be lost in astonishment at the ineffable benevolence of God? which is at all times making provision for the human race. Glory to him for his unspeakable gift. The prophet Joel. This is Joel, the second in order, who was privileged to prophesy concerning the mystery of the Lord Christ. For he speaks thus, chapter 2, 28, verse 30, 28 through 32. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. A passage which the blessed Peter mentions in the Acts of the Apostles as having been fulfilled when the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles occurred on the day of Pentecost. This prophet also foretold the wonderful things that took place in the time of the Lord Christ through the Holy Ghost, such as prophesying signs, dreams, and visions under his influence. Likewise, the day of the great, terrible, and glorious advent, advent of the Lord Christ. For example, we may point to the revelations made in different ways to just uh i think he's thinking that this already happened and i'm pretty sure the day of the, the sun return is the day of the lord but anyways what do i know i'm just the dude poorly reading the book for examples we may point to the revelations made in different ways to joseph and to the wise men in sleep as the gospels relate and to the revelation made by the holy for example made by the and to Joseph and to the wise men in sleep and to the gospels relate and to the revelation made by the Holy Ghost through visions to Simeon who took up the Lord Christ in his arms. Anna again, the daughter of Fan Fanuel, gave thanks to the Lord because of him. There were also those who prophesied such 
as Abba Agabus, the daughters of Philip. And the women who were at the Passion of the Lord saw visions of angels, as did also the disciples. And why need I speak of the descent of the Holy Ghost upon the apostles, yea, even upon Cornelius, and upon all the faithful, of whom the apostle writes, 1 Corinthians 12, 8-14. For to one is given the word of wisdom, to another faith in the same spirit, to another gifts of healing in the same spirit, to another workings of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another discernings of spirits, and to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh the one and the same Spirit, dividing to each one severally as even as he will. Glory to God, who through all the prophets foretold these things. Glory forever and ever. Amen. The prophet Amos. This is Amos, the third in order who also was privileged to tell of the coming of the Lord Christ. And in these words, Lo, I am he that confirms the thunder and that creates the wind and that announces to men his anointed. And again, he says, 9, 11 through 12, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up and close up the branches, breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as the days, as in the days of old, that he rest of that the rest of men and all the nations may require who have who have been called by my name, saith the Lord. Who doeth these things? A passage of which James the Apostle makes mention in the Acts of the Apostles. This prophet, in agreement with the first, announces Christ, through whom the salvation of the whole world is effected. And through him, God promises that he will raise up again the tabernacle of David, which had fallen, and will extend help to all the nations. And these are the same tidings which all the prophets proclaim. The prophet Obadiah. This is Obadiah. Obadiah, the fourth in order, who also was privileged to prophesy concerning the mystery regarding Christ. And who, speak it, who speaks thus, because the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. This taken... This taken in its obvious meaning is spoken of the Scythians, that is, of Gog and Magog, but it is most properly applicable to the Lord Christ. For the prophet shortly afterwards says, But on Mount Zion there shall be salvation. This prophet also again clearly proclaims that the day of salvation in Zion is near, at the hand upon all the nations. Glory to God evermore. Amen. The prophet Jonah. This is Jonah, the fifth in order, who not by his words, but by what he did and by what he typified. One second.
All right, and unfortunately, since I don't want to have to run a rendering on the edit, you guys are just gonna have to fast forward to hear my voice again. So sorry about that. And I guess now that I'm thinking about this, it wouldn't matter if I start saying that now because if I'm not gonna edit it, then the blank spot's gonna be there and eventually you're gonna have to find this anyway. But hopefully you just tap fast forward until gets you to this point and you don't click off the video or you can and read it yourself it, it really doesn't matter <laughs> let's just continue <laughs> the prophet Jonah this is Jonah the fifth in order and not by words but but by what he did and by what he typified predicted the resurrection of Christ for the Lord says as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale so shall the Son of Man be three days and nights in the heart of the earth. For as the whale vomited out Jonah uncorrupted, so also did the sepulchre vomit out the Lord to a better life. Um, and a lot of people don't realize Jonah died also. That is why... Um, that is why... This... This uh, this phrase, I'm pretty sure it usually says in the heart of Sheol or something like that. Or Jonah saw Sheol or I don't know. Anyways, Jonah's body was reserved in the whale but or preserved in the whale. But his his soul, he did die. He didn't stay alive inside of the whale the entire time. He died. And then went to the underworld, and then when the whale puked him up, he was given life again. Something along those lines. For as the whale vomited out Jonah's uncor Jonah uncorrupted, so also did the sepulcher vomit out the Lord to be a better life. Note, this prophet prefigured through his actions the sepulcher and the merit miraculous resurrection and incorruption of Christ through whom is dispensed the revelation or the renovation of man and his summon summing up in him glory to God who doeth these things amen amen the prophet Isaiah this is the great Isaiah, the son of Amos, who in a figure foresaw the things concerning the mystery of Christ when he saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up while the seraphim stood in a circle around him, and the one having six wings, the other ha six wings with which they did cover themselves, and the one cried out, to the other and said holy holy lord holy 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 lord of sabbath sabbath the whole earth is full of his glory thereupon one of the seraphim was sent to him who with the tongs took a live coal from the altar and touched his lips saying this will take away thy sins. Isaiah, by the vision which was shown to him by the hymn of praise and by the figure, was instructed to prophesy the mystery concerning Christ. And further again, in words, he thus speaks, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer. So was he dumb. The Ethiopian eunuch, on reading this passage, asked Philip to interpret it to him, and he at once explained that, that it was spoken to by the prophet with reference to the Lord Christ. And again, he says, a man who is under chastisement and knows what is to bear stitch. It knows what is to bear sickness. And and so in other passages, Isaiah don't know. Um dun, 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 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, a passage which the Lord, having read in the synagogue on the Sabbath, said, Verily I say unto you, Today is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Isaiah, the note one, Isaiah the prophet of sublimous strain, by his words and visions proclaimed beforehand to men the confession even of the Holy Trinity. Oh, see now, that's not true. That is of one God and the resurrection of human nature, which the church of God also now proclaims glory to God, who wisely dispenses all things of the good or all things for the good of the human race. Um, now, this book, well, I guess book five really hasn't been about biblical cosmology but I think now we're straying off into mainly like Trinitarianism stuff like he really just keeps talking about the Trinity and I don't know let's keep going why don't I just stop talking and just read like I'm supposed to but he too did not prophesy things strange and unusual but but like the other prophets predicted the things that would be through Christ and among them again the day uh again the great day of the Lord excuse me on which he would send the prophet Elijah still surviving glory to God who created all things and again created them anew the prophet Micah this is Micah, the seventh in order, who also was privileged to prophesy concerning the coming of the Lord Christ. And he says, And thou, Bethlehem, the house of Ephrath, art the least to be among the thousands of Judah from thee, there shall come forth to me one whom shall be for a ruler over Israel, whose goings forth have been of old from everlasting. The chief priests and scribes of the Jews taking this passage. When Herod asked them where the Christ should be born, he reply, replied, and Bethlehem of Judea, upon which he sent the wise men away to Bethlehem. This prophet further says, He will turn again and have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot, and all our sin shall be cast into the depths of the sea. He will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham as he hath sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. This prophet also, note, this prophet also in harmony with the others predicts that he who was raised up from of the old to be a ruler over Israel should come out of Bethlehem and Judah, he through whom absolution is given to the world. And the taking away of our sins and conducting us into the better state. Glory to God, who all things dispenses wisely and foretells the things which concern man. The prophet Nahum. This is Nahum, the eighth in order who was also privileged to prophesy concerning the resurrection of the Lord Christ. And he says, Feast, O Judah, keep thy feasts, perform thy vows, for they shall add to pass through thee no more. It has been consummated, it has been taken away. He wept until breathing upon thy face, delivering thee from affliction. Note, 
see also see how this prophet also exhorts us to rejoice over the resurrection of Christ and over our own showing beforehand that we shall never grow old proclaiming that is our incorruption and immortality glory to God amen the prophet Habakkuk this is Habakkuk the ninth in order who was also privileged to speak concerning the resurrection of Christ in these terms. Behold, ye despisers, and regard the wonder marvelously, and wonder marvelously, and vanish forever, because I work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told to you. This passage Paul cited at Antioch of Pisida, Pisidia as having reference to the resurrection of the Lord Christ. Note, in like manner also this prophet is commanded to predict marvelous and incredible things to men, and especially to despisers, things namely concerning the resurrection, glory to God. Amen. The prophet Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah, the tenth in order, who was also privileged to prophesy concerning the mystery respecting Christ, saying thus, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was priced, whom certain of the sons of Israel did price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord's appointed me. The evangelist Matthew mentions this passage as having been fulfilled at the time of the Passion. The same prophet again says, Lo, the days are coming, saith the Lord, and I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, etc. This passage is cited by the Apostle in the Epistle to the Romans. This prophet in like manner predicts things which have referenced which have reference to the Lord Christ, who is the prince of the second dispensation, for he for he describes in the clearest manner the first and second dispensation, the second whereof had its beginning in the Lord Christ. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Uh, the prophet Sophonias, Zephaniah. This is Zephaniah, the eleventh in order, who was also privileged to speak to prophesy concerning the Lord Christ. And he speaks thus, The Lord will come suddenly upon them, and will utterly destroy all the gods of the nations of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the nations. Yep, yep, yep. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia shall they bring offering to me, and again rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thine iniquities. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. All things are more especially applicable to the Lord Christ. This prophet most plainly point, points to the manifestation of the Lord, to the destruction of idols, and the conversion of the nations to God through the Lord Christ. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Prophet Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel who prophesied in Babylon who was also privileged to predict concerning the dispensation of Christ. And he says, I will redeem them from all their transgression, wherewith they have sinned, 
and I will purify them, and they shall be to me a people, and I, sh and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be ruler in the midst of them. He alone shall be a shepherd of them, of them all, because they shall walk in my precepts. And again, and again, and he said unto me, this water issuing forth into Galilee, which lies towards the east, was going down into Arabia, and came even to the sea, to the water at the outlet. And it shall heal the waters, and it shall come to pass that every living creature which swarmeth in every place whither the rivers come shall live. This prophet like the others, under a figure foreshadows the great founder and ruler of our second state, and foreshows also its constitution. Glory to God for the wisdom of all his dispensations. Amen. The Prophet Daniel This is Daniel who prophesied in Babylon and who was also privileged to utter predictions concerning the Lord Christ. And he speaks thus, And thou shalt know and discern that from the going forth of the commandment to the response and the building of Jerusalem, until the anointed, until the anointed one a prince shall be seven weeks, and three score, and two weeks, and so forth. And again, a stone was cut without hands, and it brake in pieces the clay, the iron, the brass, the silver, and the gold, and it filled the whole earth. And again, behold, one like unto the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came even unto the ancient of days and he saw and he was brought near before him and there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all the peoples and nations and languages shall serve him his domination his dominion and so forth note and this prophet spoke out more clearly concerning the coming of Christ, imitating both his time and the power belonging to him and his birth from a virgin and the propagation of his gospel throughout all the earth, with which things have all come to pass with God's help and will still come to pass glory to god who through all the prophets has revealed these things beforehand amen the prophet haggai this haggai who also privileged to utter predictions concerning the lord christ as under the person of zerubbabel he says things which are applicable to the lord christ and I will make these, and I will make thee as a signet, because I have chosen thee, saith the Lord God. The prophet Zechariah. This is Zechariah, also was also privileged to prophesy concerning the coming of the Lord Christ, saying thus: Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. And sh shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, even a young colt. This passage he uttered with the reference to Zerubbabel in a strain of hyperbole, hyperbole as, regards, as regards him. For it had properly, for it had properly its accomplishment in the Lord Christ. 
whom Zerubbabel, as it were, personified. He further says, and I will say unto him, What are these wounds between thine hands? And he shall say, Wounds which I received in the house beloved by me. And shortly after, afterwards again he says, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Of this passage also the Lord made mention at the time of his passion, applying it to himself when he was on the point of being betrayed. This prophet, while he said nothing alien to the utterances of the other prophets, indicated the sovereignty of the Lord Christ in the future state. The, Mal the prophet Malachi. This is Malachi, who also was privileged to prophesy concerning the things related to the dispensation of the Lord Christ. And it is thus he speaks, for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name is great among the nations, saith the Lord Almighty. And again he says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before thy presence. This passage the Lord applied to himself, and to John the Baptist the same prophet further says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteous Son of Righteousness arise with Son like S U N of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And he shall go forth does that say S U N? And he shall go forth and gamble as calves released from the stall. Gamble. And ye shall tread down winds, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I do make, saith the Lord Almighty, and behold, I will send you Elijah, the Teshubite, Tishbite, before the great and notable day of the Lord, as the Lord said to the Jews, as the Lord said to the Jews, and if ye are willing, receive it, receive it of John the Baptist, this is Elijah, who was to come, and now at the last, having finished with God's help, the twelve prophets we shall proceed to the fourth great prophets. Now this prophet did not utter predictions respecting, respecting what would be done by Christ different from the other prophets, but predictions of a smaller nature. And he again prophesied the great and notable day of the Lord, in which he says that he will send before him a Tishbite, Elijah, who is still surviving, glory to God, who created all things and who again creates them anew. Amen. Text. All the prophets predicted and reminded the Jews of the prophecies of God, which he had made to their fathers, how he promised to bless all the nations and the seed of Abraham through the dispensation of the Lord Christ. They reminded them how God in former times had redeemed them with a high hand from bondage to the Egyptians and given them the land of promise and predicted how they would be led away captives to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar and would return again with glory and again how they would suffer great miseries at the hands of Antiochus. Antiochus and the nations around them, 
and how by the divine power they would overcome them. And then he, who was expected from the seed of Abraham, would come for the salvation of the whole world according to the promises earlier given. This, this was the work of the prophets. Some of them accordingly wrote their own books. David, for instance, composed the book of Psalms, and Daniel at the time of the captivity was commanded to write what was revealed to him through visions. And there were others besides, but the rest did not write their prophecies with their own hands. But in the temple there were scribes who wrote the words of each prophet as in a diary. And when a prophet was sent by God to proclaim anything, either concerning Jerusalem, that... One second... And when a prophet was sent to God to proclaim anything, either concerning Jerusalem, that, that it would be led away into captivity, or concerning Samaria, or other places, or concerning the return from captivity, or concerning Antiochus, or the surrounding nations, or concerning the Lord Christ himself on the day in which they prophesied, the scribes wrote, In the book of the prophets, what he announced, what that is, concerning a single subject, and again, after some time had elapsed, if he wished to announce anything about another matter, the scribe again committed it to writing, recording it, in its order among the sayings of the same prophet, and inserting what he announced as the beginning of a new chapter. And so, in this manner, they compiled the whole of his book. Hence, we may find in their books a chapter relating to the captivity of Babylon, or to the return, and immediately thereafter another chapter which has reference to Christ, and then once more a chapter speaking again of the captivity and the return. And to speak briefly, unless one reads with close observation, he will find very much apparent confusion, and not only the books of the prophets, but the books of the kings, where in this manner written in the temple part by part thus the events shall the events under Saul were recorded for Saul in this time part by part until the end of his reign the events in the time of David were thus also recorded to the end of his reign and similarly, the events under each king were committed to writing during his period. In like manner, they wrote also in the records of the kings what we call paralipomenia. Don't know what that is. It was Moses who wrote the Pentateuch, which is a history of things past, present, and future. Joshua again wrote the book which bears his name. The book of Judges was written in the temple, or it may be in the tabernacle, and the same may be said of the book of Ruth. Of Ruth. Solomon again wrote his own works, Proverbs, the Song of Songs, and Ecclesiastes, for though he had received the gift of wisdom from God, and counseled every man to conduct himself wisely in this life. He did not receive the gift of prophecy. As many, therefore, as we have found to have been privileged to prophesy concerning the dispensation of the Lord Christ, we have arranged in their order. We have arranged in their order. 
And we further write concerning the four other the four other prophets, whatever things they were commissioned to predict, whereunto the whole scope of divine scripture has respect. We bring forward, therefore, first the sublimely eloquent Isaiah, who both by figure and by word was privileged to see and prophesy concerning the mystery of Christ. This is the greatest of all men, John the Baptist, who was filled with the Holy Ghost while he was yet in the womb, and leaped in joy and eagerness to be the, um, the forerunner of his Lord, a man great in the sight of God the forerunner of Christ, preparing for him a people put in readiness to receive him, a man superior to the prophets, born into the world before the apostles, intermediate between the Old and New Testament, the last under the law, the receiver of the new dispensation, the man who showed to all the Lord Christ as present among them, who surpassed all men in the authority of his manner. Okay. Um, wait. Uh, Lord Christ presenting among them all who surpassed men in the authority of his manner of life and outdid all men in service rendered who went before in the spirit and power of Elias and surpassed Elias in that he baptized the Lord a lamp that was light, light, lighted before the Son of Righteousness. He also, or he proclaimed the presence of the Lord, saying, Rabbi, the Lamb of God, which um, taketh away the sins of the world, calling him a lamb, as being a sacrificial victim and taking away the sin of the world as delivering the world from sin, rendering men incorrupt and immortal and immutable through the resurrection. This great John was privileged to be the herald such as a ministry and of such great things. This is John, the greatest of all men, who had both who had both his father and his mother as fellow prophets, who not only shows the Lord Christ to be present in as the prince of the second state, but proclaims him to be the judge of all things, saying, Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff will be burned. Smith will burn out. I don't know. Oh, with. Will burn with unquenchable fire. He again proclaims beforehand the kingdom of heaven and prepares the way for him who comes after him and who shows in himself in very deed the kingdom of heaven, which is the second state. Glory to God, who has produced all things out of nothing, and again creates them anew in Christ. Amen. The prophet Zechariah. This is this Zechariah, the priest, who was himself thought worthy of the power of prophecy, spoke both concerning his own son and the Lord Christ together in these words, and thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. The prophetess Elizabeth. This is the prophetess Elizabeth, who by the Holy Spirit was privileged to prophesy both concerning the Lord Christ and the Holy Virgin, speaking thus, And whence it, and whence it, and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
Thus, both the father and the mother of the forerunner were privileged to announce beforehand the Lord Christ. To him be glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The Virgin Mary. This is the Holy Virgin Mary who brought forth her blessed offspring to the world without seed by the Holy Spirit, who even before his birth announced with great joy the dignity of her son, and said, For behold, from, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And again, he hath hope in Israel, his servant, and he might remember mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and his seed forever. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. This is Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who gave thanks to God concerning him in the temple when his parents brought him up into the temple in the days of their purification to present him to the Lord as is written. Simeon, this is the righteous Simeon who, when he had taken up the Lord, taken up the Lord Christ in his arms, prayed to God to let him depart this life as he had been revealed to him by the Spirit, saying thus, Lord, now settest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel, the Lord Christ. This is the Lord of all. Christ concerning whom all prophecy made its predictions to men, into whom all creation turns its eyes, and to whom every tongue shall confess, bending the knee to the glory of God, Christ in whom all prophecy terminates. terminates. The judge of the judge of the quick and the dead, the light from the the light from the light, the son of the living God, unto whom the whole creation is subjected, both of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth, who also spoke through his own lips the law, the prophets, until John predicted Christ. To him be glory with the Father, and with the Holy Ghost forever. Amen. We have now fulfilled our promise in accordance with the obligations it, it imposed upon us, namely to show that the men of primitive times and all the prophets uttered predictions concerning the mystery of Christ and that they all from the first created man Adam until John the Baptist and the future state full full in their view which also the Lord Christ and his disciples and apostles afterward explicitly proclaimed setting forth that there is a future state far better than the present state which the Lord Christ first showed in himself to us when he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, which also the men of old, with some purpose in view, obscurely announced, and with and which those who came afterwards clearly set forth, we also we have also shown that no one not one of them, whether of the latter or the earlier, ever proclaimed or imagined that besides those two states there was any other state at all, at all, either before or after them, but that when God began to make the whole creation, he made these two states 
and these only, ordaining that the present state in which we live as citizens should be first, and then the future state whereunto the whole purpose of God and of his prophets has respect. Let the pagans taken by let the pagans then take shame to themselves who suppose the world to be co eternal with God, while they both advocate the doctrine of a previous life and deny the resurrection of the body. And let those who take shame to themselves who the, who are their followers and who while they regard themselves as Christians nevertheless think as think as do the pagans who assert that the heaven is spherical for their views differ not at all from those which the pagans proclaim as for instance that the bodies of which the world is made are always in corruption and that there is no resurrection of the body nor any other state than the present. Let the Manichaeans and the Marcionists take shame to themselves who reject the flesh and maintain that it is the production of the evil principle. Let all be ashamed to contempt contemn our souls I guess that who condemn our souls with their intelligence I don't know what that word is you eticus to wit Arius and Apollarius and all their followers let all the heretics take shame to themselves who acknowledge not one God, the maker of heaven and earth, known and worshipped in three persons, and who acknowledge neither the resurrection of our flesh nor the existence of angel or spirit. Let the unbelieving Jews take shame to themselves who have not received him who was expected, and confess not the Christian resurrection, but only such a condition of life as our present in which there is marrying and being given in marriage. But well done, well done, ye who are truly Christians. To you be joy and exultation, to you who believe all divine scripture, both the Old and New Testament, who have been led by the law and have believed in Christ, and in all that is proclaimed, especially when saying the law and the prophets prophesied until John. And from the days of John the Baptist to the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it, take it by force, meaning that as many as do violence to themselves and live righteously and are not guided by their own notions but have faith in God, all obtain that kingdom. And to be sure, when the mother of John and James asked the Lord that one of them should sit on his right hand and the other on his left hand his king in, in his kingdom, he answered her saying, Is it not mine to give, but is it for those for whom I or for whom it was it has been prepared by my father? That is the gift of God. It ex is extended to all, the raising again from the dead and becoming incorruptible and immortal and immutable, but to be preferred in honor to another, that is not a gift. But what is prepared by God for those who believe and act aright for the Lord again saith, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And when it was prepared, he tells us by adding from the foundation of the world. Since Moses then, who describes the world and all the other prophets and the men of old, have spoken of these two states and of these 
only without making mention. Okay, so his take is there's the spiritual and there's the physical. And only the spiritual can exist above the firmament that holds back the heavens. But there are heavens above us also, the air of the heaven, the air realms, you know. That's very interesting. Proclaiming only these and committing them to writing. And since not these only, but also the Lord, when he came along us and his disciples, evangelists and apostles who proclaimed nothing else than only these two states and these alone, that is alone. What is there further waiting to confute the belief that these things are not true? Who will not pay regard to the multitude of predictions, to the fulfillment of prophecies, to the multitude of signs and the astonishing miracles, to the very walk and conversations of all the saints and of, and of the Lord Christ and his apostles, to the harmony of the Old and New Testament, which of these dissented from the others and maintained that the heaven was spherical or proclaimed the existence of the world of this world or represented that the world was eternal or denied the resurrection of the body or the dispensation of Christ under which righteous men go up to heaven but all of them as being guided by one divine spirit, predicted the same things by words and by acts of and by figures, and all of them direct their view to the future state, and that Lord Christ himself shows in the Gospels in what place perfect righteous men, intermediate men, and impious men shall have their abode, and concerning the perfect righteous, he shows their place when he calls them to himself, saying, Come, ye blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And concerning the impious, he shows theirs when he says to those on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. As if he said to the righteous, Come above to the inner heaven beyond this visible firmament, and to the impious go down to the place about the earth, into which the devil also was hurled down. We are left under the necessity of seeking the place of the intermediate men. Christ says, then in the parable of the ten virgins that the five who were wise went in with the bridegroom unto the bride chamber that is into heaven because since they were wise they chose virginity and almsgiving but the foolish virgins who had chosen the other of these but despised the other remained outside of the bride chamber having found the door shut and heard these words depart from me i know you not wow being either permitted to enter nor condemned along with the impious but remaining outside of the bride chamber hmm. thus then each one who has right and unfeigned faith and a worthy life enters with confidence into the kingdom. But such, on the other hand, as not even one of them, neither right faith nor an honest life, are condemned to spend their time along with the devil about the earth. But those who have one and the other are intermediate men, condemned to remain outside the bride chamber, that is, the firmament, the particular nature, however, either of the good things or the punishments 
it is impossible for us to know except by our actual experience of them, but by what was merely an example taken from the punishments and the good things of life here, he indicated that would be hereafter. For since it was not possible for us before we had before we had as yet acquired experience to hear new things otherwise than in so far than in so far as they were figuratively stated, he said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king who made a marriage feast for his sons, having selected the highest of the good things of his, this life and likened them to the good things of the future life, in the manner also to the worst things, fire, the undying worm, Tartarus, the gnashing of teeth, darkness, and things similar to these, because they are the most frightful forms of earthly punishments. To these he likened the punishments of the hereafter. But it is possible to estimate neither the good things of the future life nor its terrible things. But it is possible to estimate neither the good things of the future life nor its terrible things, nor the things that are intermediate. But that other state is far better than the present and is altogether very far superior, just as this present life is far better than what than that when we were within our mother's womb, for we must consider what was our condition within the womb where we where we existed in a confusion of darkness, blood, bad humors, bile, and all kinds of impurity, while we were in ignorance of everything. But having emerged into this life, we see things quite different, of which we had gained no previous experience and extension of freedom, inspiration, of all of the air, the enjoyment of the beautiful light, the framework of nature, the workmanship of an all wise artificer, and this too while we are filled with the knowledge of God, not one of which things it was possible for us either to know or to conceive or to hear or to enjoy while we were still in the womb. In like manner, also, it is impossible for us, while we are still in this life, to understand or to conceive or to picture to our minds the future state that which is altogether better than this, unless we are in the midst of the things themselves. For, saith he, things which I saw not and ear heard not, and which entered into the heart of man, whatsoever things God prepared for them that love him. Just as God then has in his life freely bestowed a common gift upon all, making the sun rise upon just and unjust, and sending his reign upon good and bad, so also in the future state he bestows a common gift upon all, immortality and incorruption and life immutability, life and immutability. But each one, according to his former deeds, procures for himself either the kingdom or the punishment due to him, or ascent into heaven, or remaining about the earth, or the intermediate, or in the intermediate condition. All these things, moreover, are eternal and infinite, both the good things and the very worst. Uh, okay, I won't even go into any of that. We're just reading what he thinks. 
And to all together, that state differs much, yea, as much as can be, from the state here, in contrast to the good things which have been prepared for the righteous are set and the things of the impious punishment of the ut utmost severity the judgment without mercy for the judgment and punishment of this present state have their analogy in the future state let us then now come to the evangelists and apostles and show that they also speak in harmony with the ancients, de ancients, declaring that these two states and these alone have been made by God, and the first being the first, being this in which we now exist and the future that unto which all we Christians direct our gaze. Let us therefore delineate Matthew, the first of the evangelists who speaks concerning such things. This is the first of the evangelists who wrote a gospel. A gospel uh, is so called is so called because it is an announcement of things. When Upon the outbreak in Jerusalem of the persecution in which Stephen was stoned to death, he was on the point of quitting the, quitting the city. And certain of the faithful requested him to leave them his teaching and writing. He who knew by personal experience the manner of life of the Lord incarnate upon earth wrote f wrote for them an account thereof for the purpose of setting before them an image of the virtuous social intercourse of a heavenly life and of a divine walk and conversation in carrying out this design he begins the narrative which he compassed in these words, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, as if he said, addressing to you, O most faithful, my discourse of the miraculous generation of our highest duty to others of the heavenly life and of the new state. I lay my book before you. And seeing that God made promises to David and to Abraham that all the nations of the world should be blessed through their seed and that their seed should reign forever, I set forth the genealogy of him who sprang from their seed, of him through whom God blesses and whom the world creates anew, and on whom he bestows an everlasting kingdom, and I show that he is the prince of the future state, conceived and born in a new and becoming way. And he that directed his life in all righteousness and holiness and without sin, for just as the first made man, Adam, was produced by divine power from earth, which had not been sown nor tilled by man, so also the prince of the second state was produced from humankind. That is to say, that is to say, he was produced from the virgin earth without seed, without man, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And just again as formerly the female was produced from the male, so too in this case the male was produced by the female, and just as the former, having been wor worsen worsted by the devil, uh, brought death upon the human race, so too the latter, having proved victorious, destroyed the power of death over the race and produced for it, besides immortality, the life without end, the blessed Matthew having in view to tell these and such 
thing like things gave forth the work which he had written wherein he showed how christ had been conceived without seed by the holy ghost and how as he advanced in years he lived without sin among his fellow men and fulfilled the requirements of the law and gospel and all other righteousness and how when he was delivered over to the tempter he came off victorious having remained invincible and having hurled out of the air arena the adversary of human nature and how when the jews plotted against him and delivered him over unjustly to death he submitted willingly even to this for the sake of our race in order that having his having as reason required torn up the old bond he might nail it to the cross and might as a reasonable sacrifice pay the penalty of death that was due for all by offering himself to god spotless then afterwards having after three days risen from the dead he showed to all the destruction of death and exhorted all to rejoice because he had taken away henceforth the power of death matthew also mentions the ascent into heaven if not at the end of this book yet in the course of his narrative he when he speaks concerning john the baptist thus in those days came john the baptist preaching in the wilderness of judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand as if he said the mansion in the heavens is now ready to be revealed as the christ is now near but even in the beatitudes and everywhere in his book he mentions the kingdom of heaven but more especially when the when the lord when the lord is arguing with the pharisees and sadducees concerning the resurrection he speaks thus for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of god in heaven this is the design which the blessed matthew the evangelist had in view when composing his narrative mark the evangelist mark the evangelist this is mark the second who composed a gospel a work which peter in rome enjoined him to undertake he described as the beginning of the gospel of the gospel dispensation the baptism which was a type of the resurrection from the dead through which we are we are born in again into an immortal and unchangeable life then after he had given an account of the temptations of the victory and likewise of the plotting against him and the death of the and the resurrection he brought his composition to a close he too mentions john the baptist as proclaiming that the kingdom of heaven was at hand and all that he announced was in harmony with the blessed matthew note and he also being a preacher of the new testament wrote for us the same things as his predecessor beginning with the account of the baptism which is a type of resurrection from the dead that that is of the new and heavenly dispensation he showed how christ was baptized and what was and what was his manner of life and how he was put to death and rose again and ascended into heaven and ascended into heaven where there is the seat of the po pol polity that's probably an easy word i just don't know it of the second state glory to glory to god who from the beginning has prepared it 
and announced it beforehand and has fulfilled it and is fulfilling it. Amen. Luke the Evangelist. This is Luke, the third of the evangelists, who, having seen that many had taken in hand to write Gospels and invented many things out of their own head, at once wrote to his own disciple, Theophilus, warning him not to be carried away with their fic not to be carried away with their fictions and not to be turned away from what from from what he had learned at first that thou he sa that thou he says Mightest know accurately the certainty of those things wherein thou wast instructed. He relates, therefore, to him what he had already delivered to him, beginning from the birth of John, announcing this, that the birth of the forerunner also was miraculous. He then related the birth of the Lord Christ according to the flesh, which was also miraculous, and, following the design of Matthew, who had preceded him, he enumerated his ancestors retrogressively, showing that he was descended from David and Abraham, and going still farther back, he derived from Adam, as he found no remoter ancestor. He then at length fell back upon God, saying, Who was the Son of God that is of him who, according to the sacred historian Moses, originated the creation and made the first man, Adam? Then again, after having narrated things similar to the other evangelists concerning the baptism of the temptations and still further concerning his death and resurrection, he relates after these, both in the gospel itself and in the Acts, his ascension into heaven, and states that he will he will in like manner come back again, and he and so he also closes his work, directing his eyes to the object of desire, which all expect, and instructing in this also his disciple of the God beloved. Theophilus. Note 1. This preacher of the New Testament also said the same things with the others, beginning from the generation of the forerunners and coming to the birth of Jesus and showing what was the manner of his life. In like manner, he also discoursed of the evangelical life, I mean baptism, death, resurrection, and finally the second state. Glory to God who from the beginning prepared these things and announced them beforehand, and who has now fulfilled and is fulfilling and fulfilling them. Amen. Note 2. It was he again who noted down the doxicology of the multitude of the hosts of the angels who were rejoicing and exulting at the birth of the Lord Christ according to the flesh and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good pleasure among men, now putting away from themselves the old dejection brought upon them from the brought upon them the first first made man and rejoicing at the birth of the second adam this this is the, the john the theologian this is the theologian john the chief of the evangelists who was the most loved by all of all by christ who learned upon the breast of the lord and who leaned upon the breast of the Lord, and who from thence was from an ever-flowing fountain drew forth the mysteries, to whom, when resident in Ephesus, there were delivered by the faithful the books composed by the other three evangelists, having received 
which he expressed his approbation, approbation of them. Some things, however, he said, and had been had been omitted by them which it was necessary should be narrated. And having been requested by the faithful, he also gave the world his book, which in a manner supplied what we had been omitted. As, for instance, the account of the marriage in Cana, the account of Nicodemus, of the Samaritan, of the Samaritan woman, of the nobleman, of the man who was blind from his birth, of Lazarus, of Lazarus, of blind from his birth, of Lazarus, of the indignation of Judas at the anointing of the Lord with myrrh, of the Greeks that came to him, of the washing of feet, and of further doctrines concerning the Comforter stated in the course of the narrative. But in particular, he made clear proclamation also concerning the divinity of Christ, which he set forth in the outset of his work at the foundation, all which subjects had been omitted by the other evangelists, having begun, therefore, with the divinity of Christ, he forthwith passed to his humanity, also stating such things as had been recorded before in the others, the baptism, temptations, death, and resurrection. Then again he added, such things as Christ had done after the resurrection, how he entered when the doors were shut, and how he showed his hands and his feet and his side to his disciples, how he ate and drank with them, how he journeyed with them, and how he held their eye how he held their eyes that they should not see him. Um, how, as often as he wished, he at once vanished from them, how, by way of instructing her, he said to Mary, Touch me not, teaching her by these words that intercourse between mortals and immortals and mortals is not fitting, but rather intercourse with mortals must be immortals must be in heaven. I don't know what that's talking about. Wherefore also he directed her to go away and tell the disciples, I ascend into heaven into which ye also are to ascend. So when he also had written all these things, he brought to an end the book which he had written, having the same object in view as the other evangelists, namely to teach us that we ought to look away from, his, from this state to that which is to come into which all inspired scripture, both of the Old and of the New Testament, has reference. This illustrious preacher of the New Testament, having committed to writing the omissions of the other evangelists and filled up what they, they left defective, Discourse. Discourse in like manner with others of baptism, manner of life, death, resurrection, and ascent into heavens, which is the abode of immortal and righteous men and the angels. That is, it is the seat of the second state. Glory to him who has prepared these things and announced them beforehand and is still fulfilling them. Amen. Peter the Apostle. This is Peter, the chief of the apostles, who was entrusted with the keys of heaven, who has the church founded on his own confession, who thrice denied the th and thrice confessed, who nobly prayed and he might sustain he might sustain crucifixion with his head downward, and he kept and he, keeping in view the same object as the other evangelists, 
thus spoke in the Acts. Here I would have it to be observed that within the compass of merely a few lines he has described the whole of the argument of the evangelist making mention when speaking concerning him Christ of Nazareth where he was brought up and saying that he was a man of God as being the second man and this and through him God wrought wonderful works also that with his own consent he was put to death by lawless men and that God raised him up immortal and immutable for so he said having loosed the pagan pangs of death and that having been exalted by divine power he ascended into heaven and sent down from thence the Holy Spirit for no one else for not one else not even David himself ascended into heaven, but the Lord himself concerning whom David said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies the footstool of thy feet. He says again when he addresses Cornelius for the word see, Acts 10, 38-43. In like manner when he, held, when he healed the lame man, he said, what is recorded in Acts three nineteen through 21 he mentions also the passage in Moses, A prophet shall the Lord God raise up unto you. In several passages, the blessed Peter bears his testimony in like manner as the evangelist, and declares that all the prophets had announced all these things beforehand, that God made had made and is making a second new state, which also he announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets. But neither said that before this state there existed another, nor did he declare that after the future state there would be another. But along with all the prophets and apostles, he asserted that there were only two states, the present and the future. At the time of the building of the tower, when the men who fought against God wished to ascend into heaven, God, by dividing their tongues, frustrated their designs. But when, at the end of the times, he had come for salvation of men and led up our nature into heaven, then on the day of Pentecost, by way of an... I think this guy thinks that Jesus already had a second coming. I don't know. But anyways, by way of announcing beforehand the ascent of the rest of mankind, he brought the tongues together again through the Holy Spirit of heaven and gave them the apostles. And Peter, who was appointed to the great preacher of the New Testament, when he was discoursing to the multitude and carrying the keys of the heavens, which had been entrusted to him by Christ, proclaimed confidently that confidently the things which the evangelists also had taught in their writings, baptism, holiness of life, death, resurrection, immortality, grace, and incorruption. For this is the import of the saying, having loosed the pagans of death, and in like manner he called the future state the ascent into heaven, and the times of refreshing. And this he calls the blessing which had been promised beforehand to Abraham, and says it had been preached to all the nations by all the prophets, and that, excuse me, I apologize, and that the prince of it was the Lord Christ, through whom all the nations will be blessed and honored by God. Glory to him who has prepared these things. This is Stephen, the first martyr of the New Testament, and the first deacon who had for his slayer the, the great Paul, who he was yet zealous. 
for the law, who alone by himself contended. This is Stephen, the first martyr of the New Testament, and the first deacon who had for his slayer the great Paul, while he was yet zealous for the law, who alone by himself contended against the whole synagogue and made the judge of the contest rise from his seat to witness the spectacle. This is he who saw the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. For while the whole of divine scripture speaks of him as sitting, this man saw him standing. For the vehemence of the contest made the judge rise up in the view. Wherefore, also on being invited to ascend to that glory, he prayed for those who were stoning him, saying, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge, but do thou thyself receive my spirit. Lo, he also saw and preached the same thing with the others, namely that Christ, the prince of the second state, is in heaven, and of him he entered that he would receive him into that place. Yep, we've got to go home, y'all. But it's going to come down here and bridge through to the... It's going to be bringing both of the worlds to one. Um... And this man, who was a preacher and a zealous champion of the New Testament, with his very eyes saw within the firmament Jesus spiritually, whom also he entered to receive his spirit, while addressing a great length and assembly of the Jews. He accused them of having been the murderers of Jesus. Wherefore, he also has exhibited to us a trustworthy what who who's who had preceded preceded him and taught death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. Glory to him who prepared these things and announced them beforehand, and who now fulfilled and is fulfilling these things. Amen. Paul the Apostle. This is the great Paul the Apostle, the leader of the heavenly phal phalanx. I don't know what that is. Um, who has Christ speaking with him, who carries about the marks of Christ in his body, the great teacher of the church, who endured daily ten thousands of deaths from the church, who gloried in the Lord and in his own infirmities, who had the grace of Christ flowing in him, who spoke to all nations in their tongues, who was once a persecutor, but is now persecuted, who was once a sinner, but has now obtained mercy, who was caught up into the third heaven and again into paradise, who was the hearer of unspeakable words, the occult judge of spiritual gifts, Paul, who prescribed the regulations of divine service and surpassed the other teachers of the church, whose salutation in all epistles to serve as a token in the grace of the Lord, in all his epistles generally as if he were already in the second state, he continues always rejoicing and full of assurance, saying, He hath raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places and by hope have we been saved, and countless other expressions he uses which we cannot now conveniently cite. However, some will be mentioned that we may not too far prolong our discourse. Now, um, as I'm reading this, I'm not sure if some of these notes are added in, because I don't think they had... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe this isn't from 600 AD. Because I don't think they had chapters and verses in 600 AD. But, I don't know. 
we shall find references there to in nearly all his 14 epistles, namely that we are hastening to run from his present state towards that which is to come. Whence also he exhorts us in these words, let us be eager to enter into that rest, speaking of that rest as if there is no other after, after it, but a kingdom that cannot be shaken, meaning that meaning one that has no successor. What need is there to speak of this chosen vessel? A new and mighty trumpet sounding among the Gentiles, gathering together Jew and Gentile into one church. Since the choice of him at first was made by Jesus, calling to him from heaven, and when he was instructed, he was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He again, still, when still sojourning in this present state, was caught up to, into the third heaven and saw the ranks of the angels and beheld and worshipped observed by the invisible virtues, the principalities, the powers, and the dominions, and having entered in, the, in and viewed as in a glass the ministrations of all the virtues that have been named, he exclaimed, are they not all ministering spirits set forth to do service for the sake of them that shall inherit salvation? So also he spoke of the rank which the adversary once held, and that how he had the power of the air, and he announced his fall from heaven in consequence of his pride, he again exclaimed, Know ye not that we shall judge angels, and again the saints shall judge the world? This is he who is, and all his epistles exhorts us to think of heavenly things, and to seek heavenly things, and to make haste to run to heaven, and to press forward in order to obtain the things above. This is he who, when he had declared that heaven was the city and habitation of righteousness, of the righteous angels, of the righteous angels and men, and in a word of the whole church declared besides that, uh, besides that the Lord Christ after the flesh was, was a was the supreme head of the whole body. For he said that he was above all principalities and powers and virtues and dominions, and above every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. And to speak briefly, this apostle is the great teacher and interpreter of heavenly hosts and of the church and he makes mention of the present and the future state only and the immortality and immutability and of the of all the good things in the world above excuse me the power of which we are not able to reckon to god who has prepared these things beforehand and announced them beforehand and who has now fulfilled and is still fulfilling them, be glory forever. Amen. Note 2. At the very outset of the epistle commends the faith of the Romans, which was proclaimed throughout the whole world, and calls them his fellow believers. But the Corinthians he reproves because as being recently philosophers of this world, he already believing in the resurrection of the Lord Christ, they make this as of no use to them, seeing that they do not believe in our own resurrection. The Athenians before were right in calling him a picker up of sown seeds, since he tore up by the root the tares of the superstition. The Galatians he calls senseless, both because 
they readily changed their opinions like insensate, insensate things. And because after baptism, they had been deceived and submitted to circumcision. Mm, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to do circumcision. I don't know what's going on here. To the Ephesians, he reveals the whole counsel of God and declares that in their city, he had fought as it were with wild beasts prophesying and saying to them that afterward there would come some to them as wolves and would tear them asunder. And therewith he said that from themselves would arise some who, like wolves, ravage the church. The Philippians he regards with the utmost admiration praising them as those who alone displayed their great care and love for for him in his bonds and his and in his defense and who often sent him supplies for his his wants the colossians again he praises for their faith if they continue in the same having love to all the saints the Thessalonians he calls lovers of the brethren and speaks of them as being persecuted and as suffering on account of their godliness. He calls them in like manner as the Hebrews faithful and confirms them in like manner as the Corinthians in the belief of the resurrection of the dead along with the belief of the second coming of the Lord as a Hebrew and as a member of the Hebrew community regarding its interests as his own he designates them holy brethren and called and 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 called and partakers of heavenly things and speaks of them as persecuted and suffering for their godliness only, however, he adds, if we only fast the beginning firm until the end. If we, he adds, if we hold fast the beginning firm unto the end. And he cautions them not to become faint-hearted from the fear of persecution and not to run back into the unbelievers. To Timothy again, who was then in Ephesus, he sends a message in writing, warning him against the teach, teachers of a different doctrine. And again, his giving heed to their fables while he confirms him in the doctrines and delivers to him ecclesiastical canons. That thou mayest know, he says, how men ought to behave themselves in the house of God. He says also that some heresies would show themselves at the last and would subvert the truth, and he predicts that they would not make progress to what is better, but that they would become manifest and that their foolishness would be evident to all. To Titus again, who was in Crete, he delivers ecclesiastical canons and confirms him in the doctrines and administers rebukes to the Cretans as being liars and frivolous and crafty and led astray by those of the circumcision. Writing to Philman, he bears witness to his abundant faith, to his piety, and to the love of which he has for the saints, whose slave oneisms, whose, when unprofitable, he has changed for the better and made a pious man. And the great apostle exhorts the master of this slave to receive him no longer as a slave, but as a brother in all 
epistles. Moreover, he urges it upon all men to enter into the habitation of the heavens through right faith and good and a good life, and not to miss the good things kept in store for the righteous, along with whom unworthy as we are, Dean, Dean, the Lord God, maker of the universe, in thy compassionate goodness, a number of us. I must observe further that Paul, being a Hebrew, wrote to the Hebrews in Hebrew language, but his epistle was translated into Greek tongue, as they say by Luke or by Clement, in like manner as the gospel according to Matthew text it behooves us o most beloved of god to observe the harmony that exists between moses the historian of the world and all the prophets and evangelists and apostles how they all harmoniously assert that god made the whole world divided into two states for to this end, when God began the work of creation, he made on the second day the firmament and bound it together with the first heaven. Excuse me, I apologize, guys. Having placed it midway between the earth below and the heaven above, thus dividing one place into two places, and the lower of the two places he ordained to be this world, but the higher prepared from the beginning to be the future world according to his previous design. For it is not in this transistory life that our hope lies, but in the future life which hath no end, wherein is our adoption as sons and redemption and immutability and righteousness and sanctification and blessedness and perfect knowledge and glory and whatever other blessings are laid up for us to be received from God after we have had here experience of things both good and bad in order that as far as possible we may know the full certain sense become the sons of God, and are exalted to the glory and joy unspeakable. On this account, there, on this account, even here, we the faithful, after baptism, become partakers of the mysteries of the body of the Lord Christ, in order that after the resurrection, by devoting ourselves to the Lord Christ, we may become partakers of his glory, attracting to ourselves glory from the glory that is his. Wherefore, also, the term partaking is used according to what is written by the apostle, we say. But we are all with un face beholding reflected as a mirror page 232 one second oh no page 232 sorry one second But we are all with unveiled face, beholding, reflected as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are transformed into the same image from the glory to the glory, even as from the Spirit of the Lord. As if he said, when the Lord is nigh, all we, the faithful, in the most manifest manner, without any veil, behold the glory of the Lord as in a mirror, and are transformed to the same image as the Lord has, partaking of his glory, of our own glory, for the partaking of the mysteries indicates also our partaking of his glorified body, 
just as we behold him reflected as in a mirror and partake his glory for out of his faithfulness we do all receive receive nor does he in giving liberally suffer any diminution of his fullness but the expression as from the spirit of the lord is intended to show us that just as moses received glory from the lord so do we receive glory through this holy spirit note just as we who are born in this world are nourished by the milk of our parents that is are organized for living from their flesh and their blood we so we are commanded to take our nourishment mystically from the body and blood of the lord christ since in the future state according to the view of scripture he is our father from whom and through whom we receive glory and are so to speak reborn into life eternal in this state takes place the initial birth and the nourishment of the milk and the mysteries organizing suitability suitably for living for living that has been generated a type of generation through water and the spirit and the mystical nourishment of the body of the blood of christ inviting and strongly drawing to life eternal him that believes and partakes in the future state again is the resurrection from the dead whereby we rise up from our graves as from the womb and are born anew and refashioned and especially there is it is the participation of the glorified immortal and incorruptible and immutable body and soul of christ glory to god the creator and renovator of the universe forever and ever amen text divine scripture is wont to speak of the creation as being from the father and the incarnation as being from the son and the regeneration of the dead as being from the holy spirit not that the father does this alone or that or the son that the holy spirit something else <laughs> but the holy trinity conjointly affects man he's really deep into this trinity this must have been like trinity right there like right when it was being so enthusiastically um put into the minds of people not that the father does this alone or that the son or the or the son that or the holy spirit something else but the holy trinity conjointly affects the creation and the incarnation and the resurrection for as has been said divine scripture with a view to show that there is one god in three persons is wont thus to distinguish them namely by ascribing to the father as cause the causing the world to exist by ascribing the son as a begotten the cause of the carnation the incarnation as possessing a worthy adoption to the being and being the foundation of knowledge and by ascribing to the holy spirit as proceeding from the father and virtue of the look how confusing they make that in virtue of his life-giving and sanctifying power and regeneration and redemption and sanctification of the future state for just as the son has himself the power of giving light and heat and without these cannot be perceived so likewise the father has two powers proceeding from him apart from which he cannot be seen the son namely and the holy ghost and just as the son is a fiery body and has one of his powers to give light and the other to give heat and neither the heat giving is the light giving power nor the light giving 
the heat giving power while the sun and his powers are inseparable the one from the other so in god father and god and son and holy ghost there in one god oh. the father with his two powers existing inseparably the one and the other and there and these are seen by the mind in their proper persons for in this case god is properly incorporeal and the similitude so far as it is such is obscure but we may take a further similitude from our own soul for just as the soul uh, has inherent in itself word or discourse and understanding and the discursive faculty is one thing and the understanding faculty a different thing and the word goes forth from the soul inseparably not deserved from it well the same is true to the understanding nay they are in the soul and from it and with it so we must think of god wherefore also since the evangelist employing this illustration called the son the word as proceeding from the father and being with him and being of the same substance and the apostle paul taking an illustration from the material world called him the in effulgence but the old testament says let us make man in our image and after our likeness here in both the words that and that it is express ex, it expresses plurality but the phrases in our image and after our likeness do not mean the same thing but the former is of the means of the means one thing and the other a different thing the presence in our image has this sense that image that man and man alone as having all the things in himself things visible and things invisible things perceived by the intellect and things perceived by the senses things corruptible and things incorruptible indicates that there is one creator of all things that are even god and man is in his respect the image of god through his knowing that there is one creator of the universe as the apostle exclaims for a man ought not to cover his head being the image and glory of god thus expressly declaring that a man was made for the glory of god in the accordance with his with this calling him his image as man alone is capable of knowing that there is one creator and of of the universe even god who formed man as the only living creature in whose composition are found all the natural qualities but the other expression after our likeness has this sense that adam was a father and not a son and from his own substance by procession produced eve who is called neither a son nor a sister but by generation produced his own son seth who gave who again was of his own substance producing him by generation and by her procession thus producing the one the way the one one way and the other another way out of his own substance but inasmuch as adam had a beginning those also who spring from him have a beginning but as god and the father has no beginning those who are of him proceed from him without being and are eternally with him just as the effulgence of and heat of the sun and just as the world just as the word of the intelligence 
are with our soul, according to the similitudes of the divine scripture and and some of the fathers have employed similitudes regarding the Holy Trinity drawn from the material world, some of them speaking of the two rivers as flowing forth out of an ever-flowing fountain, and others of branch and fruit produced from a tree that as the root, but all, whether apostles or fathers, as being but men, have spoken under the inspiration of the Spirit in similitudes drawn from the natural world, which, however, fall together short of exhibiting the divine substance. But in the future state, again, when we shall rise up spiritual beings, we shall know more exactly concerning God in the manner there Therefore, divine scripture in these passages, having in view to set before us the persons in the Trinity, frequently employs the phraseology declaring the creation to be, so to speak, from the Father and the Incarnation to be of the Son, and the Resurrection to be of the Holy Ghost. But yet it is the Holy Trinity which does all things. Look, guys, I'm only reading this because I don't want to just leave it incomplete, but he's going off on a tangent here. The blessed Moses, however, as if God were speaking, said, Let us make man hear the word through the plural number at number can be understood to refer only refer to two only, since therefore it seemed good to God not to deliver us to us at the first an acknowledgment of the Holy Trinity, lest we should think the persons of whom it consists to have material bodies. And we should thus suspect that there are three gods when he came to the creation of man. He then expressed himself ambiguously in the plural number, yet in such a way that it could be understood that he was speaking only of two. But after some time he elapsed. He is again found using an expression more distinctly plural, plural when he says, Come, let us go down and confound their tongue an expression which can only be longer be can which can no longer be thought applicable to only to two only but to three or more then again after an interval of a great many years not to introduce a host of instances god again used the an expression ambiguity respecting the Trinity, repeating thrice through Isaiah the whole word holy, which he made applicable to the God, saying, The Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory, showing both the number of the three persons in the unity of Godhead, but in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh, he taught this clearly, saying, Go ye and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, speaking indeed of one name, but distinguishing them into the three persons. And since he was going to proclaim these things clearly, giving intimid intimation of them beforehand, through the form of a bond servant on his making the announcement at the creation of man, he used the plural number, let us make man, when therefore the Lord shall come from heaven. He takes with himself into the kingdom of heaven the faithful, the righteous, the worthy, 
both angels and men, but as for the rest, some of them he permits to be outside of the firmament, and others he consigns to the need of the parts around the earth according to what he says in the gospel and the account of the consummation of things. Then there shall be two men in the field, one is taken, the other one is left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one is taken, the other one is left. And if he said those in the field, namely, all those that are in the world, whether rich or poor and middle class, that is to say, whether be their rank in life, whosoever is found worthy is taken into heaven. But if he not, but if he not, if he be not worthy, he is left upon the earth. Then, when he speaks of those grinding at the millstone, he means those that are bond servants, and such of those bond servants as are found worthy are taken into heaven, while those that are unworthy are left upon the earth. By his using the masculine form in the first instance and then feminine form afterwards, he has indicated the difference of sex, whether they be males or females, whether they be righteous or sinners. The Apostle Paul also in the second epistle to the Thessalonians expresses himself to the same effect, saying, at the revelation of the Lord Jesus, the heavens with the angels of the power and flaming fire rendering vengeance to them that know not God and to them that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall suffer punishment, even eternal destruction from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at in all them that believed. He also showing that for the faithful saints, great and unspeakable glory is treasured up, but to the unbelieving a doom of destruction that is a punishment in congruity with that state. For in destruction, the sorest punishment and deep repentance is very is every one found who does not enjoy the holy delights and glories um, bring himself into bondage and therefore and glories and the blessedness treasured up in the righteous. It is the duty then of every Christian in this life to bring himself into bondage and therefore and thereby to make himself obedient unto God and to believe the whole body of the divine scripture both the Old and the New Testament and to be a strict guardian of the doctrines and to lead a life consistent with the faith and in accordance with with what we professed and vowed when going forward to baptism to thrust away from us and renounce all satanic and pagan error and unbelief and folly and groundless hope for the remaining in them they will incur the most grievous harm while calculating and predicting eclipses and divine science without possessing any hope beyond this, they, and while leading others into the errors into which they, uh, to which they themselves have been led. Now, if anyone resorts to these men as the prophets, when he has lost a mantle or anything else, he hears them of it or recovers it through men, through them. Who deceived him as to the truth as to the truth but if not then not even this such are the hopes of those weak-minded men who ascribe to the heaven a spherical form nor are they able to hope for anything further neither a resurrection nor a kingdom of heaven nor a better state since they both lose the sphere and ruin the hope itself they have 
may it be ours, O honored head of the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the prayers of Our Lady, the Mother of God. This dude is saying, he, I, he wasn't talking like this before, but obviously, obviously, I this guy is heavily influenced by the Roman Catholic Church. And through those of all the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and teachers, to be numbered along with those on the right hand, and to hear with them that surpassing and blessed utterance, Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Note, the whole scope of this work and of the delineations is to set forth that from the beginning God, through all the men of old and through Moses the cosmographer, and all the prophets and apostles has shown that there are two states, the present state and the future. And we have exhibited also the figure of the whole world and have shown that the Christians prefer to follow their own principles and that their ends are conformity with their principles. And herein we have proclaimed the goodness of God in the ex exercise of which he has set to end to this state of discipline the wrestling and to wrestlings and to corruption and death and we have set forth that in the lord christ immortality incorruption immutability blessedness sanctification and righteousness everlasting were prepared for all men as he prepared from the foundation of the world and the second place which is the, in heaven, and the second state, as again he showed it to us beforehand, typically by means of the tabernacle. We have shown besides that the opinion of pagans is one which holds no hope, for neither expect a second state, nor believe that there will be a resurrection of our bodies, but they lead others into error and are themselves in error their minds whirling round and round along with that spear of theirs <laughs> that's pretty funny and they think it to be impossible for god to raise the bodies of all men although as being wise they ought to know that god that if God is judge of the thoughts and hearts of all men and can discern the thoughts of each man since the beginning of time, he should be able all the more to discriminate the bodies of men. For if he is also able to discriminate uh, the things of the spirit, much more is he able to discriminate bodies. For he shakes them from its foundations, the whole frame of nature, heaven and earth, together with the other elements at the final consummation. And each of these renders back whatever human body it possesses, body possesses. God, by his power, making the discrimination. And just as one who sifts with a sieve will find the object which he seeks, so when the whole creation is shaken, those who are sought for will be found amidst it. It shall, for saith he through who are sought for will be found amidst it. For saith he through the prophet, for yet once more I shall shake not the earth alone, but also heaven. But the word yet once more signifies the apostles show that the removing of those things that were shaken as of things that have been made, that those things which are not shaken may remain. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us show thankfulness whereby we may offer our service well pleasing to God and reverence and piety and supplication. Also, the Lord referring to the consummation says in these texts, these are the good tidings of the Christians. These the great and wondrous hopes 
of the faithful, the resurrection of the dead, and the kingdom of heaven prepared from the foundation of the world for men who, as soon as they have obtained immortality and incorruption and immutability together with Christ, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, treading on high the paths of air, and shall reign as kings with Christ, shall with Christ possess heaven as their dwelling place, being permitted to tread with Christ the entrance to the tabernacle, not made with hands, being called along with Christ and the holy angels, citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, rejoicing with Christ, exulting with Christ, exalted with Christ, uh, wearing crowns along with Christ, glorified with Christ, enjoying with Christ the thrones of grace, enjoying with Christ righteousness and sanctification and redemption and blessedness, and every eternal and unspeakable good, what nation or what sect can be believing possess can be can by believing possess such hopes except Christians alone. The pagans do not believe and are without hope, being in love with their wisdom of this world, which has not the power of itself to take hold of even one of the things unless a divine illumination should follow. In like manner also the Jews, not believing in Christ, when he appeared and openly proclaimed these things and confirmed them both by himself and by his apostles, have incurred the loss of all these things. The Samaritans again and the Mount mountainous being more stiff-necked than the Jews when they could not be taught by Moses and the figures of the world and did not believe even the prophets confessing either angel nor spirit nor the immortality of the rational soul but denying the same doctrines as the pagans even the resurrection of the bodies suffer the loss of the, of of all these things in like manner again the man manchians who hate the body and do not confess its resurrection but suppose it to be the workmanship of an evil deity and expect that it will be destroyed these also are deprived of all good things being condemned as impious along with that deity whom they elected for themselves upon earth. In like manner also all the heretics who deny the assumption of our flesh and our soul at the same time of the incarnation, who whosoever by denial take away the divinity of the Son and seek to lessen the divinity of the Holy Ghost are also deprived of all these good things for the for those alone who acknowledge one god in three persons without begin, beginning eternal uncircumscribed invisible intangible incorruptible immortal immutable imperturable imperturable incorporeal, unlimited, incomprehensible, uncompounded, indivisible, the maker of heaven and the earth of all things visible, excuse me, and invisible, known and adorned in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, who in the last of the days at the time of the incarnation, desiring to renovate the world which he had created, and having taken again from the Holy Virgin Mary our substance, God, the Word, the f with the Father and the Holy Ghost, who's without seed, with a view to renovate the microcosm, which is the bond of the whole creation, namely the man by his own inclination, became united to him in a union wondrous and indissoluble in such a way that the assumption was not understood. Um was not understood to precede the union but the formation and assumption uh, that and the union were simultaneous and he consented 
and he consented to suffer and to be put to death and when he had made the man perfect through the resurrection he led him up to up into heaven and honored him excuse me with a seat at his right hand and appointed him to be judge of all those also who in like manner with him live uprightly enter into the bride chamber along with the bridegroom those to wit who take away neither his divinity nor his humanity uh, his humanity these with Christ sing together for joy and reign with him in heaven hearing from him at the final consummation these words come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world but of the day of the consummation no one knows except God alone they say however that until men become equal in number to the angels the consummation of the world will not take place for Moses says he set the boundaries of the nations according to the number of the angels of God as if he said he set the boundaries in this in their becoming equal to the number to the angels the apostle in point of fact also says but when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in then all Israel shall thus be saved here clearly speaking of the final consummation nay even the Lord manifestly hints obscurely at this when he says at the resurrection they are all equal to the angels ye then as many as are Christians and take hold hold of this hope and have the Lord Christ as your example and model when reading this book of mine pray for me a sinner that the Lord of all will not disdain me but will in his mercy make me to be numbered along with you in company with those on high on his right hand while he overlooks our transgressions and that I may not fail to obtain a blessing is unspeakable through your prayers and supplication and uh, he overlooks our transgressions that I may not fail to obtain the that blessedness unspeakable through your prayers and supplication and by the consummation uh, compassion and kindness and grace of Christ the Savior of all of us all to whom the Father and the Holy Ghost be glory both now and evermore without evermore world without end amen a Christian's Christian topography embracing the whole world there's that and there's this and there